In this economy, it is more important than ever to ensure that every student in every classroom has the opportunity to grow, thrive, and achieve to their fullest potential. This is becoming increasingly important as our competitiveness abroad has shifted. Several years ago, Speaker Pelosi asked us to come together around an innovation agenda. We went to Stanford University and talked to, to the best in the high-tech, biotech, and venture capital fields. We talked about innovation and discovery, believing that discovery and innovation are really the only sustainable sources of economic growth in the world today. What evolved from these conversations was an interesting definition of the kind of person employers would want to bring to their companies. They want workers who can work across companies, across countries, and across the continents. They want the, they want the most diverse workforce in history to assemble solutions to emerging problems stemming from, the mo stemming from the most diverse client base in history. Unfortunately, this does not sound like what we're preparing today's kindergarten students to participate 16 years from now or even 12 years from now. This is not today's education system in America. But to quote Secretary Duncan, we now face the opportunity of a lifetime to work with our schools and other partners to build an education system that benefits students, families, our economy, our, and our country for generations to come. For quite some time, I've been cataloging all the reports that acknowledge that we're running an industrial-based education system for an agrarian society on an agrarian clock. You might not believe me, but it's been very interesting. It acknowledges a, funda a fundamental mismatch that we, haven't, that we haven't paid much attention to other than a, a rather clever anecdote from time to time acknowledging that fact. Today's students use technology in almost everything they do. From the moment they wake up from the digital alarm clocks, listening to their iPods uh, as they walk to school, communicating with their friends on Twitter and Facebook, or sharing information on YouTube, they're, they're, they're used to cus customizing their worlds at the click of a computer. But for school today, for far too many kids, does not look like the rest of their world, does not capitalize on technology's potential to engage students and to improve learning. Run, one critical element of learning in the future must be to provide technology-rich classrooms for all students. Research shows that when technology is systematically integrated into classrooms and used by digitally savvy staff, it can improve teacher effectiveness and student achievement and reduce the dropout rate. And as my grandkids tell me, it makes school a lot more fun. We call that engagement. Take, for example, the Stephen F. Austin Middle School in Byron, Texas, where the students were given laptops to help integrate technology tools into their daily instruction. This led to an improvement in student achievement in both math and reading. In the seventh grade alone, reading scores increased by 13% and math scores by 14%. At Dion Warwick Institute in East Orange, New Jersey, fourth and fifth grade students wrote the, and recorded educational raps about civil rights leaders for a black history project. This project also helped them demonstrate their understanding of math strategies and concepts. Students who participated in these projects saw their math scores increase by an average of 9.6 points and, and uh, social studies scores increased by 9.4. It seems to me that if technology can substantially increase student engagement, raise student achievement and graduation rates, and prepare our students for college and the workforce, then we must do everything we can to support these types of innovation in our classroom. But this is about more than just the future of our workforce. It's about the future of our democracy. The options, opportunities, and availability technology can bring in the classroom must be available to everyone. I, and I am extremely encouraged that we, that, that we expanded this access. We will make more progress in closing the achievement gap. I'm encouraged that we're taking steps in the right direction. This Congress has already endorsed several important pillars of reform included in the American Recovery and Reinvestment Program, particularly in Secretary Duncan's race to the top, which has unprecedented potential to shape the future of learning in our nation. It also included $650 million for educational technology state grants, and I believe this money can be well spent. In any industry, it is considered smart business planning to look to the future and how a company and the industry will change, grow, and adapt. If we are serious about creating world-class schools and regaining our competitive edge, then it's time we start thinking about education the same way. Today's hearing will explore how innovation and technology are changing the way teachers teach and students learn. We will see firsthand how transformational power of technology can unleash the talents of our, our teachers and students so they will, in fact, be able to use discovery and innovation to assemble solutions to the problems that future generations will face. I'd like to thank our witnesses for being here, and I look forward to your, uh, to your testimony. Now